When I first bought my Specialized Pitch, I had a list of lots of different parts that I want to upgrade on the bike. Probably top of that list was the X-Fusion O2RL rear shock. I never liked it. From the moment I started riding the bike, I did not like it. I came from a hardtail and I don't know, something about that shock just felt really bouncy and uncontrolled to me. A lot of the climbing as well that I was doing with it, it was just making me tired all the time because I could just bounce up and down on the bike all day while I was climbing. And going downhill, it was fine. It was probably better than a hard tail. It was, was better having rear suspension than none. But at the same time, there were just times I come off jumps or go over roots or, and it just felt so uncontrolled. Like there were often times where it just, it felt like it was gonna book me off. And in fact, it did. There was a trail I was doing called Little Shush. And as I was going down the trail, I went off a little drop. As I landed, the bike just it rebounded really quickly and it threw me into a bush over the handlebars. And yeah, I just felt like it was the weakest part of my bike or my least favorite part of my bike. So today in this video, I will be showing you how I address this for pretty cheap. I decided to go for a secondhand shock in keeping with the spirit of this bike being a super ultra budget bike and a friend of mine spotted a what looked like a pretty good deal on eBay. And that was a Cane Creek DBIL rear shock. That was the right fit for my bike. So my specialized pitch needs a 200 by 57 rear shock. So it was pretty lucky to find this on eBay actually. After having a little read about the shock and seeing what it was like, Man, Cane Creek just have a great reputation for just building really good performance parts. This one had also just been serviced by a company called JTEC in the UK, which meant that the stanchion had been replaced with the newer black model from the older stanchions that these models have. And it also gets the new internal seals. So, I mean, that would eliminate a lot of the problems that these shocks were known for in the past. So, I went for it and ordered the shock. So these shocks come with just tons of features. Uh, the first of which is the climb switch and it's probably the one I'm happiest about. So the climb switch allows the shock to lock out for when you're doing uphill climbing. So that is going to eliminate a lot of that bobbing that was happening with the old uh, X-Fusion shock. And then standard for most rear suspensions, it has a Schrader valve, which you can use to adjust the air volume in it. Nothing special there. It's equipped with the typical O-ring again, which is good for setting sag and ensuring you're not bottoming out. And below the O-ring is a shaft wiper, which again, that's just gonna prevent dirt from ingressing into the canister and damaging the internals. And you can see there's that JTEC sticker on there, which is just uh, nice to see that, considering he did mention in his advert that it had been serviced by JTEC. Now, part of what makes this shock really special is that it has four modes of adjustment you can adjust high speed and low speed compression, and you can adjust high speed and low speed rebound. This level of adjustment gives you a phenomenal amount of control over the in and out stroke of the shock and really lets you dial in just how you like the shock for your riding style. So Cane Creek also provide a um, factory tune sheet that you can download off their website, which shows what the shock comes from the factory set as. And this is what I use as my baseline to sort of test the shock. So they give it two clicks for the high speed compression, seven clicks for the low speed compression, two clicks for the high speed rebound, and 10 clicks for the low speed rebound. So again, I just set mine to that and wrote it for the day just to get a feel for how the shock would perform. You can see here on my old X-Fusion shock, there is just rebound adjustment. And despite the amount I would adjust that, I just never felt like I was getting great results out of it. There was definitely a noticeable change in the way the shock would perform, but again, ah, it just didn't feel like it was doing a whole pile. Now, if you've never changed around a shock before, it's actually a pretty easy job. This is the first time I've ever changed a rear shock on a bike and I breezed through it. Most bikes are gonna have 
two bolts holding in the shock, one at the top, one at the bottom. It's just a case of removing both of those and pulling the shock out of place. Just be wary that when you do remove the bolts, the rear wheel won't be supported by anything anymore, so it will just drop. I also had to steal the bushings from my X-Fusion shock as the Cane Creek shock was supplied with none. So yeah, I was able to pull those out and fit them to the new Cane Creek shock. Installing it is just the reverse of uninstalling the old shock and again you might just want a second set of hands just to hold up the wheel and take the weight off so you can just position it just right but I was able to jimmy it into place myself no problem. So when I arrived at the trail I set the pressure in the rear shock to about 190 psi that gave me about that 30% of sag that they recommend at the rear shock. I'll leave a link in the description below to show how to properly achieve that sag. Uh, Cane Creek actually do a great video on that. So my first impression when cycling uphill was just phenomenally good. It was, the lockout was working great. I could see in the video there was a little bit of bobbing, but I can tell you when I was cycling uphill, I didn't feel it at all. It felt nice and solid, and I really felt like I was transferring power to the back wheel as I was cycling up. Now, the bit that is probably the most important bit, going downhill. This shock just completely changed the way my bike felt. Before, it felt bouncy, a little bit out of control. I felt like my back wheel was off the ground a lot, but with this shock, man, the back wheel just felt planted on the ground. Landing after a jump felt super just cushiony, supple. I didn't mess around that day too much with the rebound and compression settings. I was just more getting a feel for that kind of base tune to see what I could do with that but definitely in the future I will be tinkering a lot more with that especially because there's so much adjustability half the fun of owning a shock like this is that you get to tinker with it so much so just again a part like this can really transform your bike it can bring a pretty mediocre ride to feeling like something that just rides beautifully and if you're in the market for new parts for your bike Trying a second-hand shock like this, upgrading to something better, really will make the difference, and I couldn't recommend Cane Creek enough. If you can buy something second-hand that's been serviced by JTEC or another one of their official service centers, I really would recommend going for it. They have a great program where they are replacing old unreliable parts with their newer parts, so it means that you might be buying an old shock, but you're getting nice new parts in there. So. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. I have a few more upgrades I'm thinking about for this bike uh, before I call it truly complete, but this was a really big one that I was hoping to do. Thanks very much for watching, and if you're enjoying the content, please do think about liking the video and subscribing. It helps out the channel, and I'll see you next time.